Joy Harris teaches high school and college athletes about the business side of sports and how they might access a career in the industry. She is the co-founder of Connect Electric, the CEO of SCORE, the chair of the media company CMG, and hosts the podcast Inside the League. Harris co-founded Harris House, a media company dedicated to providing content, events, and books for people who have big dreams. Her book, Singing Ain't Enough, tells the story of Maggie Ingram and how she achieved success in a male-dominated field while raising five kids as a single mother. Welcome, Joy. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> so do you have a sports talent? No, I don't have a sports talent. I think sports was one of the things that I'm competitive by nature. And so I kind of apply the philosophies of sports, but I didn't specifically play a sport. So what sports do <clears throat> the athletes you work with, what sports are they in? So the major sports that we focus on are football, basketball, soccer, and baseball. Those are kind of our big four that we really try to work in, but we're super open to athletes with any sports background. In fact, I just had a conversation with somebody who's in field hockey. Wherever we can make progress and impact, I'm game to go in. How did this part of your journey in guiding these young athletes come about? So interestingly enough, my son got into football pretty early. And I always joke that I tried to vote him into Batman because it was less of a contact sport. And so he was like totally against that. And so the more that he progressed in his career, he's pretty young still, notice just the lack of information about how to get to the league, but then also how they benefit before and after they go into the league. Sports have a really short lifespan, and I think sometimes people don't realize that. So my thought process was, okay, well, we can't just send you off somewhere where you're only going to really benefit three years, but you're going to give them eight, nine, ten years of your life just to get there. It has to be more than that. So that kind of started my rabbit hole down the land of sports and what we could do to make it better on the side of the athletes. Do you collaborate with some other people like coaches and, and agents? What is that process like? Yeah. So we try to have events that include trainers. We just had an athletic training event with the New York Knicks. Uh, so training uh, with coaches and agents and athletic directors, really the collaborations during those events are really to take athletes behind the scenes, not just how to run faster and jump higher, but what's the business side of that position? What mm -hmm. is the agent actually supposed to do? What should you look for? How do you get one? And then if you're interested in that career, how do you become an agent? Because again, the lifespan of an athlete is three years on average, unless you're Tom Brady or LeBron James, <laughs> but on average, it's a really short lifespan. So how do you take advantage of some of these positions and things that are around you in your life? And then how do you become it if you want to as the next step in your journey? Yeah. And that is interesting. Really, for you to come up with this, this is amazing because they're so young when they're drafted. And I don't know about you, when I was 18 years old, I didn't know crap. <laughs> you're, you're fig As you should be. I think we put a lot of pressure on athletes to be buttoned up and perfect by the time you're 21. You hear in every other sector, in every other sector, it's like, oh, 20s are for you to figure it out and find yourself. And 30s are for you to start narrowing it down. And 40s are for you to perfect it. They don't have that luxury at all. In fact, the perfecting process is becoming even younger now. So now, by the time they're ninth grade, 14, 15, they have to have it together, at least on the field. And so imagine if somebody said, hey, you have to have it together by 15. You have to pick your agents, your managers, your trainers by 18. You have to know how to run your finances by 20. And it has to be perfect on field and in front of the camera. It's daunting. And you have to prepare for it for 10 years, but I'm going to only fund you for three. <laughs> In any other industry, that sounds crazy, right? Except for sports. And so 
my goal is not to say sports are bad. It's just yeah. to have the athlete be in a better position and more knowledgeable and more of an asset, not only to the teams that they play for, but to themselves as well. Well, and also, I, I think that if they have this knowledge in their back pocket, and their parents do too, they know how to look out for the snakes. Because <laughs> there, yeah. there has been, I mean, there, I don't know if there's that many of them, but I mean, there is the odd person. I know I've seen it in football where, you know, this guy thinks he's an agent and he comes in and tries, to, you know, that's not how it works to get right. football. Right. So, so, but they, it's all about getting their money. Right. And then yes. you see other agents that kind of spend their money without their knowledge. I don't think that's very common, but at least this information, this might help alleviate some of that. That might yes. help them pick that out. Yes. And you look at it, at least the way I look at it, because I was a CEO of businesses first, this, it is a business An athlete in and of themselves is a business. And so the part that you don't hear is typically parents are investing $10,000 a year from ninth grade. Right. So if I'm invested about $40,000 before I even get to a college, yes, I'm grateful for the opportunity, but as an investment, you want to make sure you have some type of return on that investment. And so, yes, I want to bring an ROI to my customer, which is either the college or the protein, of course, but I also don't want to have a deficit on my P&L, so to speak, right, on my athlete's life, on their financial experience. So uh, I definitely look at it from a standpoint of that. You want your customer to be happy, which is the team, right? You want to be conscious of what makes them happy. It's not just your on-the-field activities, it's your off-the-field activities. Do you bring awareness to the team? But you also have to run yourself like a business. So having knowledge about what that entails, I think helps the athlete actually get a return on their investment that they've worked so hard for. And so far, it's a lot of information about how to run fast and jump high. It's not so much about how to handle your business, your athletic self as a business well. And even if you have the talent of a Connor McDavid, which means your career is probably going to be as long as Wayne Gretzky or even longer mm -hmm. if you don't get hurt and you're going to be raking in tons of money. This also helps that athlete learn how to manage their money. I yeah. can't tell you how many athletes I know. Well, a lot of them. I mean, I talked to Marcus Ogden about this mm. uh, from the NFL and it is so easy. It doesn't matter how many millions you have when you retire or when you retire. If you have $6 million and you spend seven, you're broke. Yes. Yes. <laughs> or, yeah. if you, or if you, again, get a snake, you can be as educated as you want. And it's still, there's people that are really they they just find a way to wheel their way in so they can get their money. But a lot of players just literally go through their money and they have nothing at the end. Right. You well, know. I think, oddly enough, players are, and they are, they're treated more so like employees, right? But an athlete is actually a business owner and the team is their contractor. That's actually their relationship. Yeah. Um, but you That's aren't a good way to put it. You're taught, you know, algebra and geometry, which is amazing for some. But well, you I say they're taught, meat, but <laughs> <laughs> but you you actually need to be taught PLs and cash flow and balance sheets. Yeah. Because you actually are the business and teams and brands are your contract. They're your vendors. If we change how it's taught. I think athletes stand a better chance to understand how to run their money. In terms of the amount of money, there are people in debt at every level, right? So it's not just athletes, although athletes get highlighted more. I just think they haven't been taught correctly. They've been taught more yeah. that you're an, an employee of ours and you should be honored to have this position. And yes, grateful for all things. But technically, you are the asset and you have to figure out how to run yourself like it. I, I love this so much because it is so important to get this message in. And it's a tough ask 
because from the professional side, so many athletes, oh, my agent will handle that. My agent will handle that. Right. Well, in the case of one all-star NHL player I know, his agent did handle that. He, he <laughs> stifled everything he, he made right. and it's right. devastating. Yeah. Well, you don't even know what an agent is supposed to do, right? Yeah. If I'm 18 on my mom's couch and this person comes in and says, I'm, I'm not disparaging agents. I, I have many no. great, wonderful agent friends. Yes. I think they agents. will tell you the same thing. <laughs> yeah. They're agents in every, there are book agents. There are business agents. There are speakers, bureau agents. Agents exist and they serve a wonderful purpose and they have access. But if you don't know what they're supposed to do, and if you don't know that you are their manager instead of necessarily them being your, if you don't know, then you don't even know how to, check it again. You don't even know. It's just like a business. You don't know how to gauge if your business is successful if you don't know what your P&L is or what it does, right? right? You could be making tons of money, but if you've never looked at the financial statement, you don't know that you don't have any, right? That you're, you don't, you don't, you don't have a clue. So yeah. a lot of it is just not being aware of how to run yourself like a business, which is actually what's necessary. I can't even imagine the feeling your the bottom falling out of the ground <laughs> right. down and finding out after all this and investing so much in this yeah. career and all of a sudden yeah. you have nothing left. I can't even imagine. And oftentimes it's at the end of your career because if you think about an athlete's schedule, they when do they have time if they don't know ahead of time, no. when do they have time with the capacity to pay attention? They don't. Um, in high school, if you're training every day of the week sometimes two a day, so twice during the week, and then hopefully you squeeze in some homework. When am I supposed to Google my agent or find out their reputation? A lot of times you don't have a forward-facing profile of what their history has been. Again, no hate to agents. I think they're necessary. And I think there are wonderful agents who have created lots of opportunities for athletes. Yes. But I think we don't always do a great job of educating athletes on what they really should be paying attention to and how. My schedule well, they should guide their agents too. Agents have a one way of doing. You can't guess. It's just like hiring a PR firm or yes. any other professional. You can't guess what that other person wants. You have to have a conversation. And although they do, a lot of them do have it back and forth. But if you know the right questions to ask, then yes. it helps you understand more. Yes. So that's great. Wonder questions is super important and some people well how do they not know it's like do you know how to ask what your debits and credits are do you know that's just like some me somebody bringing me into a nasa and saying hey we're gonna give you everything you need all you have to do is ask i don't even know what to ask for i have no i would have blown the money on stupid shit I'm gonna. As I, bought a I was boy. playing as i was playing <laughs> yes so i, I, I bought <laughs> I bought aluminum foil because I thought that's what's necessary to build a rocket. That's the equivalent. I think that <clears throat> that's huge. It, it would be headlines everywhere. You know, the female entrepreneur spends <laughs> 10 million on foil and metal. It's like, I'm, I'm learning, right? But just the window that athletes have to learn is it's super short. They yeah. have three years to play well and learn the business. That's nothing. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's get to your book, Singing Ain't Enough. Why Maggie Ingram? So Maggie Ingram is my grandmother. She's passed oh. now. Um, but the super cool thing about her is she had all of these stories surrounding her life and how she broke into industries and how she broke into kind of a very um, anti-women leadership industry. So kind of growing up, watching her and seeing that you, you hear all these stories, you're like, oh, that's just a part of her life. And then I started doing some digging just out of being curious and finding out a lot of her stories were true and the strides that she made, not only in her industry, but also having reforms happen in the prison system in Virginia. I just felt compelled to be like, man, people see the front of what you do, just like athletes, right? People see the talent that you display and they don't often see all the behind the scenes that has to go in it, the barriers that you have to break, what you have to overcome. So it started out as a labor of love and I'm super glad that I got it out to the world. It ended up really being inspirational to more people that I even anticipated. I'm super grateful for it. So what did she teach you? What did what you learned teach you about her? 
two things, actually. One, you have to be relentless in your idea for yourself, right? Your passion for you. Everybody's not going to be on that train with you. <laughs> and most of the time, nobody's going to get on the train until you're way down the field and you've proven that you can do it. So you have to be relentless about it. And then I think too, you have to have something bigger than yourself to hang your passion on because the impact comes from like the people that you touch. And I think so often we get confused about, hey, the talent and the shine is for me. And I think it's an extension of you, but it really is the impact that you're able to make with it. And sometimes that just happens by you just being relentless about your passion. I think those two things, like being relentless and then keeping in mind the impact that you're making on others, that's the important part, are two lessons that I learned from her, many lessons yeah. that she passed out. And, you know, the different generations as well, although sadly, some of the things that were experienced by her generation are being experienced today too. But yeah, I guess you just have to keep moving forward and keep doing things like even with what you do with the athletes, don't let anybody tell you can't do it because right. like, you, you're a badass for doing this and, and coming up with this idea. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> And I, I think, just I think, think this is great. You're here. You've got a hard. hero in a lot of athletes' eyes. Do you have a particular, you don't have to give any names, but do you have a particular example of bringing all this together and how this impact of what you've done with the athletes kind of combine, culminate, and kind of follow in her footsteps? Yeah, I, I won't get names, but I'll give two examples actually that are just recent and I'll I'll give them as two small examples because I think the, or what I'm learning, because it, it took me a while to learn this as well, that the hand-to-hand -hand combat of people, that direct impact to the one is super special. And oftentimes I think just me being in business, you know, I'm looking for always the best bang for my buck, kind of a nod to my grandmother one athlete, they got injured. So they had played this sport a long time and they got injured and they weren't going to go like they don't because they suffered multiple injuries. And so we started talking about their career path and what they wanted to do and what they could take away. They ended up getting a job in broadcasting kind of from some connections and really helping them kind of see the light. They love that career. They get to be right in the sport. And later on, they talked about I didn't think I would love it the same. I thought I would only love my sport, but I'm so glad I still get to be in it. They didn't even think that was an option, right? They didn't even mm -hmm. think I was playing the sport. They could be in the sport. And they're going to, I mean, they're going to excel. A, they know the sport. A, they know the players already. They have rapport that they have with players. So they are, they bring their own network to the table. And because of that, the company that hired them, they already are a standout asset probably about people who went to college specifically for broadcast journalism so they just have to take a couple of classes and kind of hone their talent but to me that's a big win for mm -hmm. an athlete to be able to pivot and see a lot of times an athlete gets hurt they go into depression people mm -hmm. don't know that right because they've invested so much time and energy so to me for an athlete to be able to see how to make that pivot quickly without going into depression or it turning worse I think that's a win for someone's life who is forever changed and who sees a light that they didn't see before. How do athletes find you when they want some help? I'm on social media, usually at the Joy Harris. Score is on social media as well. Score on IG. You can DM us. We're going to be having a pretty huge event this summer called ScoreCon, where we're going to be bringing out athletes, people in the industry, people to talk about NIL, what it is for real, how you can make money from it. We'll be uh, having, I think it's scorecon.co. It's going to be out pretty soon pretty soon so people can find out about the event. It's going to be a multi-sport conference, which is rare. And again, this is not a conference of, we're just going to bring you here to show you how to jump faster and throw farther. We're going to bring you here to show you how do you make money from your brand? How do you set your business up? 
How do you become an asset to the teams that you play for so that they want to keep you on longer, not just because of your skill, but because of the awareness that you bring with them? How do you set your career up for after you're going to play? We're really going to give you the nuts and bolts, kind of business 101, mm -hmm. uh, if you think about it, for athletes so that their athletic career drives benefit to their actual life. Sounds like an annual event. Yes, that's what we're shooting for. This is the first <laughs> one happening this summer. We're looking to have 800 plus athletes there. So wow. I'm super excited about it. Wow, that's awesome. Thank you so much for being on the show. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. This has been great. Super have enjoyed talking to you. And thank you for your work that you're doing, keeping uh, uh, the lines of communication open and diversity at the forefront. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you.